Well, I'm Mr. B and I'm back from the dead. Chilling at the beaches down at Club Med. Make another video because the people, they want more of this. Suckers, they be saying they can take on Adam Horowitz. Unit 2, we got clout. Are the DJs, I'll knock your head out. Okay, the first word in this unit is adroit. It's an adjective, it means skillful, especially in the use of hands or mind, clever. So he was a very adroit thief because he could pick someone's pockets without them feeling it. The next word is amicable. Amicable is an adjective, it means friendly, peaceful, cordial. Um, and you could use this word, say, their relationship was amicable until Brian ran over Susie's dog with his car. A good way to remember the word amicable, it's got the Latin root A-M-I, ami, right? So uh, if you take French, the word ami means friend, amigo in Spanish. In Latin, the word would be amicus, right? Amicus, uh, friend. So an amicable person is someone who's friendly with you. The next word is averse. It's an adjective that means having a deep-seated distaste, uh, to be unwilling, to dislike. So if you are averse to taking risks, this business venture is not for you because you could lose all your money. Or if you are averse to exercise, maybe running that triathlon is not the best idea. The next word is belligerent, and it can be an adjective or a noun. As an adjective, it would be something meaning combative, violent, warlike. So uh, his belligerent attitude didn't make him many friends on the playground. It was like he wanted to fight instead of play with the other kids. Um, but it can also be a noun. Belligerent can be a noun meaning one who is at war, one of the parties who fights in a war. So uh, during World War II, the belligerents included the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, etc. Uh, and you can even see this on Wikipedia. Uh, if you look on the sidebar for any war or conflict that you look up, it'll say, you know, belligerents. And then it'll say underneath, you know, America and Germany. And then it'll say who the commanders were for each thing. And no, that doesn't mean you can use Wikipedia as realia. Sorry, guys. The next word is benevolent. It means kindly, charitable. It's an adjective. So you could say, the benevolent priest always made sure to give money to the homeless outside the church. Benevolent. Um, if you're looking for a, a way to remember this, the Latin root bene, B-E-N-E, -E, uh, it means good, kind, caring, benevolent. A benevolent person is generous, caring, kind. The next word is cursory. It's an adjective. It means hasty, not thorough. The police sergeant only gave the crime scene a cursory glance before pronouncing the death a suicide. But Sherlock Holmes knew otherwise because he took more time to observe. Cursory, quick. The next word is duplicity. It means treachery, deceitfulness. It's a noun. So you could say uh, Benedict's Arnold, Benedict Arnold's duplicity was discovered after he surrendered West Point to the hated British Army. The next word is extol. It's a verb. It means to praise extravagantly, to lavish with praise. So you could say, today, many people extol the deeds of Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King, praising them for what they've done for humanity. The next word is feasible. It's an adjective. It means possible, able to be done. Uh, so you could say, Mr. Benedict's plan to take the tables out of his classroom and replace it with beanbags was at first deemed not feasible, not possible. But due to his initiative, it's happening anyway. Get ready, guys. The next word is grimace. It can be a noun and a verb. As a noun, grimace just means a wry face, a twisted expression. So the grimace on the face of the soldier showed how much pain he was in on the battlefield. You could also use grimace as a verb, meaning to make a wry face or a twisted face. So the patient grimaced as the doctor popped his dislocated shoulder back into the joint. The next word is holocaust. It's a noun. It means a large-scale destruction, especially by fire, uh, a large killing, a uh, burnt offering. So you could say that during the 1950s, 
people were afraid that a nuclear holocaust would befall the world if the Soviet Union and the United States launched nuclear weapons at each other, a large-scale destruction. Uh, this word obviously also is applied often to the mass killing of Jews in Nazi Germany. Uh, this genocide was labeled a holocaust in part because the Nazis burnt the bodies of their victims. The next word is impervious. It's an adjective. It means not affected or hurt by, uh, impossible to enter. So you could say, with my suit of armor on, I am impervious to damage. Or, you need to make sure to store that flower in a container that's impervious to moisture. The next word is impetus. It's a noun. It means a moving force, an impulse, a stimulus. So you could say that the oncoming winter gives Mrs. Delotel a new impetus to collect coats and warm clothing for St. Benson's homeless shelter. The next word is near and dear to my heart. It's jeopardy. It's a noun meaning danger. So if you lose your pickaxe on the side of Mount Everest, you put yourself in serious jeopardy. Or if you don't do your homework, you are in jeopardy of getting a failing grade in the class. The next word is meticulous. It's an adjective. It means extremely careful about details, very picky. So if you are meticulous around the house, you're always vacuuming and straightening pictures and dusting. Meticulous. The next word is nostalgia. It's a noun. It means a longing for something past. Homesickness. A longing for bygone days. So his extreme nostalgia for the Midwest colored his entire time spending he spent in New York. The next word is quintessence. It's a noun. It means the purest form of something, the ideal form. So you could say that risking your life to save somebody else's is considered the quintessence of courage. The adjective form quintessential is much more common. So the quintessential example of courage is laying down your life from somebody else. The word quintessence comes from a long time ago when Greek thinkers like Aristotle believed that there are four elements and then there was a fifth, quint, five. The fifth element was the most perfect, the most pure. It was so perfect it couldn't exist on earth. Quintessence. The next word is retrogress. It's a verb. It means to move back to an earlier condition, to go backwards. So in William Golding's novel, Lord of the Flies, Several proper English schoolboys soon retrogress into a barbaric society where they stab each other with sharp sticks and etc. The next word you've probably heard of before is scrutinize. Scrutinize is a verb meaning to examine closely. All the soldiers lined up for inspection and the commanding officer scrutinized them looking to see if any of their uniform was out of place or disheveled or unkempt we might say. And finally, we have tepid. Tepid is an adjective. It means lukewarm, not enthusiastic, marked by an absence of interest. So you could say the critic's praise for the movie was tepid at best. He really didn't think it was a very good film, but he didn't think it was an unqualified failure either. It was tepid. You could also say you're supposed to cook tea in boiling water, and this water you've brought me is rather tepid, lukewarm. So it can be used literally to talk about temperature, or it could be figurative, talking about the lack of interest or lack of enthusiasm for a project or something like that. And that's it! Unit 2! We went through that really fast. So watch this video as many times as you need to. It'll really help you with your studying, I hope. And prepare for our quiz, which will take place this week. So until next time, it's me, Mr. Benedict, signing off with another very valuable vocab video. I'll see you soon. Okay.